we're moving on. <laughs> but yeah, so there was some people that definitely stood out. I did mention it. Um, you know, Cord- Cordell Patterson had two touchdowns, 44 rushing yards, nothing too spectacular. But when he did rush, um, it did count. So that's obviously good to see. You know, I, I do like how he kind of, to me, it, it's very comparative to Leonard Fournette. He's a power running back, right? So he likes to break tackles and stuff like that, and that's really good because he's got the size. He's, he's got the versatility. So it's really nice to see that. Only nine receiving yards, but, I, again, it, it's really nice to see, you know, him take some pressure off of um, Tyler Algier and Caleb Huntley and all those people. So that was really good. Um but um, for the dud, unfortunately, it's going to be Taekwon Graham for basically what I mentioned. Um, dropping that fumble at a crucial point like that um, is brutal. You know, I'm not going to say it's a, a one-person reason why we lost, but it's really hard to, you know, say that it wasn't completely his fault. Um, also, my other dud was also Drake London, unfortunately, because also at another crucial moment, when he was, I believe, on the seven-yard line, he also fumbled when all he had to do was go down. So true. it's one thing to be said, you know what I mean? Like if you're going to rush, especially as a wide receiver, uh, and you're going to try and break tackles, you better not fumble the ball. Honestly, especially in the red zone, that's the one thing you don't want to do because that could have easily been the whole deciding factor of the game where we could have won it. So, yeah, it's really tough, but, you know, um, all, all we got to do is move on and hopefully we learn from it. And, uh, yeah, I – it's, it's going to be tough. We're in the prime time game, but yeah, that, that's that's all for me. So, uh, Nicole, what do you, what do you think? Who are your studs and duds, my friend? Oh well, uh, I definitely. I was going to say my studs, Camara. Uh, he got seventy. He's now at seventy-one touchdowns, and I really do like him when he's healthy. He started breaking loose and getting um, some rushing yards but there wasn't really much excitement or joy for choosing some studs in the mix um yeah Kamara he's a good solid uh and he's close to actually doing some career um things actually for the Saints as um a rushing game I remember actually when I was younger and watching the Saints a little bit and new kind of with Drew Brees beforehand, we didn't really have a good rushing game. And I always knew r- running the ball, we weren't really getting much. But as soon as we got Ingram and we have now Kamara, our running game has improved. Um, and is actually, you know, it's it's improved. It was it's better than what it was. So I am happy with that and we'll continue to try and and get better. Uh for my duds, it was the defense in general. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you guys saw or watched the game, but there were several plays where you could just actually tell there was miscommunication on the field with some of the safeties um, and for covering. And that gave a perfect window of opportunity for them to either, you know, run the ball. Well, it was almost like they almost had even two running backs on the field because Mr. Jackson uh, was running like um you know, one of those guys. So <laughs> like a like a gazelle running from a deer. I mean a gazelle running from a lion, sorry. <laughs> he he ran he had I would like to actually see how much rushing um points he had because I was not quite happy about that. Um but yeah, so that was my dad's was the defense. There was a lot of holes and as well with the tackles, uh they couldn't grab them. Uh, and that's what led, I think, to a lot of the game. Although also, too, our offense didn't even really produce anything. It was just field goals. So, yeah. Good for Will was... Lutz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. so. You know, you, you kind of, like, made me think of a question, actually. So, I, I guess in today's age, and I guess this is going to be, like, a round thing, what do you guys think matters more? Like, if you had to pick, do you think the rushing game matters more or do you think the passing game matters more in today's, I guess, football? Because I think comparatively, like beforehand, and from what I see that people that are long-term NFL fans, they would say that the rushing matters more because that's how it used to be. It's breaking tackles and running it in, and it wasn't so much of the air game. But is that the same situation in today's football? Andrew? <laughs> yeah, this yeah, always ladies first, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think it's a, an e- equilibrium between the, the both. Um, I remember – I missed 
the rushing yard guys like that would do that when we didn't have them. Um, but I, it slows the game down. That's what I know. It slows the game down and it puts the time and possession in your control. And as long as you have from a soccer player stance, as long as you control the ball and you have possession, you control the game. Yep. So, um, Fair. I would I would say passing, and it's only because it's it changes almost I would say every maybe three to five years. So like you know we were seeing Zeke and Saquon and all those guys get drafted high because it was an actual running back league. Um, but now and stuff like that, you're finding you know Zeke, which is essentially Najee Harris at like the 17th overall pick or in the second round and stuff like that. Like they are available later on. Um, so it will change again. Like it will go from being a passing league right now to a running league in probably another three or four years. But yeah. you did see it happen this – what was that? Was it a Monday game or the Sunday night game? The Tennessee and uh, – Yeah, and that's what I'm referring to actually. That's yeah. what just... it's, it's ex exactly what he was going to say is Kansas City's defense is built for pass. That that it's It's literally built for pass because if the Chiefs are going to beat you – they will literally put up 55 points and let you put up 53. Like that, that's what they will do. But the second that you got a Derrick Henry, you got a, there's another one too, uh, Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Those two running backs single-handedly took the Chiefs down. So, or mm -hmm. I mean, almost, I guess on Sunday night, but like Malik Willis had 80 yards, pat, 80 yards, pass, 80 yards passing. Yeah. He did pretty good. Actually good stats that game. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, like, respectively for only 80 yards passing, but, like, Derrick Henry just was like, screw it. I'm going to do it myself. Assembled yeah. all the Infinity Stones and was like, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So here's the Infinity Gauntlet. You know what? I definitely agree with you. Um, I guess the kind of to add on to what I was saying, too, is you look at a team like the Tennessee Titans with Derrick Henry, right? And, you know, Derrick Henry by far is probably the best franchise player that the Tennessee Titans have had. So the thing is, is with Derrick Henry, right? He's definitely won them a lot of games, but notice how, you know, he can't go and win them a Super Bowl, right? That's the issue mm -hmm. is you can't just base it on running. You look at right now, even the Eagles success, actually, the Eagles might be eight. No. And the Eagles are eight. No. <laughs> are you thinking if, the, if, if Derrick Henry is the best player on the Titans? That well, no, 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 no. The way you worded it for, so I'm so sorry. Cause like my mind, it just, cause you, the way you worded it is like the best, like of the franchise. And I'm like, what? And then I started thinking about, I'm like, is Derrick Henry yeah, well, the best player to <laughs> technically ever play for the Titan? But then I'm like, McNair, and there's a couple other names, and I'm like, I don't want to insult Titan fans, but yo, like, I. Well, I would say he's definitely the more consistent for sure. For sure. Like, so I don't know. I could, maybe that's I got a him on my statement, fantasy. But at the same time, it's a good the point, statement, though, dude. The, the, point, the point I'm trying to make, though, is. He hasn't won them a Super Bowl though, just based off rushing. You don't see that often happen, where like a, like a team is going to win a Super Bowl based on rushing yards. It's mm -hmm. it happens, but it hasn't happened in a while, right? And again, you look at the Eagles, kind of where I was going with that is the Eagles are winning and they're eight zero because of their passing game. Like it, it is well known that the Eagles want a solid running back, and there's nothing even to take away from Miles Sanders. Like he's good, but they have a really good passing game right now. And a very solid defense, right? Wasn't there a uh, Marshawn Lynch? Uh, that was on Seattle, I believe, was it not? Yep. Yeah, the Seahawks, yeah. Yep. So kind of, again, touching on that too is with Marshawn Lynch, right, mm -hmm. is a big controversy is when they were playing the Patriots in the Super Bowl and where they should have ran it. And that's a situation where it's reversed maybe is they should have ran it, but they decided to throw it to kind of spice things up when really that's what cost them the game. So – there's a lot of debate on that one, but neither here nor there. Um, mm. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I don't know. Food for thought. I guess maybe that's the comment section. You can kind of go and comment on that. What do you think matters more, the passing yeah. or the rushing game? So uh, not to take away from you, Foobs, but uh, who are your studs and your dads in the game? Oh, dude, totally, that, listen, you brought up some good content where, like, and now my mind is – I see some of the comments <laughs> you're going to, and even I'm just like, yo – like talk about the randomest team and the randomest comment to like really tick off the, the the fan base if you really wanted to, or have them all do the whole like stop meme where it's like, <laughs> like maybe so maybe listen you 
you literally said something there that like Stephen A. Smith would get a whole day's worth of talking about type thing. So like props to you. That's that's content. <laughs> I it. That's literally content because people are talking <laughs> about it in the comment section and people will be talking about it. Uh, my studs right off the bat for the Buccaneers. This is a random one. Uh, Rashad White. Okay. Leonard Fournette, I love you to death. Playoff Lenny will always exist in the the Super Bowl that we had. I love I I love that you're getting paid and stuff like that. But whatever it is happening here, whether it's that video that and stuff that was getting posted about the old Jameis Winston thing, people bitching and complaining, b- b- blaming and complaining, not nothing, all that kind of stuff on the plane. Like there's something up with Lenny. Rashad was a third round pick where I was like, Damon Pierce is still there. Damon Pierce is still, Damon, Damon Pierce is still, uh." and, and I was like, this is going to be another bond. This is going to be, he has been the one saving grace of this offense where when I see him on the field and this is very early, but it is a B rated Le'Veon Bell in his prime where he's very old. I like that though. He's very, very, very patient. He's waiting to see what his offensive line does. Mind you, his offensive line is more scrambled than our damn play calling right now. Yeah. But he sees it. And he actually is asking for that pass catching. And yeah, he's missed a couple of stuff like that from Tom Brady. But, but he doesn't? doesn't. Well, that too. And Tom Brady has specifically said before too, I will throw that ball kind of towards you, but also away from you if I don't think it's going to be a good play. And Rashad's not used to that. And he's doing good. So he's been a number – like, he's my stud. I love him. I really do. He's been doing absolutely amazing things. Uh, today they also said that it might be his backfield now. Like, they might start using him a little bit to a lot more. Well, so how, how long is Lenny going to be here for? That's the real question, right? Is I think he's 23 years transition. old. Lenny? How old is he? 23. I think Ooh. he's older than that, Nicole. I'm pretty sure. Mr. – Rashad White? Oh, yes, no, oh, 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 yes. Got you. I was like, Rashad's 23. I was like, Lenny's 27 or 28. So <laughs> Yeah, he's like around our age. Yeah. Um, so I say Lenny's only here, in my opinion, until uh, this season's done. I, I think the Bucks oh. after this season, when Brady is gone and probably goes to the 49ers or whatever, uh, he basically, we have to start saving money and drafting replacements. That's why we don't trade our picks. And I get that. Um, and you'll have to start cutting some of these players and some of these contracts, and I think you'll be one. Yeah, fair. Okay. Yeah, no, that's uh, – I definitely agree. Um, you know, Rashad White, like he's definitely been – you can see that he wants it, and that's the thing that I really like mm-hmm. is, you know, I, I don't mind if a team loses, but at the same time, if you hold your head up high and, you know, you go in there and you try with the intention to win, uh, to me, I think that really matters, right? Mm-hmm. So – to see that, that's always a good sign for sure, right? So, yeah, no, kudos to him. You know, he's definitely a player you probably want to keep because those are the players that will ball out when the, like when you need them the most. So, um, what about on the reverse side? My Quickly, for my dad, I don't want to talk about this anymore because I made a show that said, mate, this could be the greatest offensive line we've ever had. And, 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 and our dad is our offensive line. It sucks, and I should have never made a show about it. Let's go on to Nicole, please. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, okay, we're good, we're good. <laughs> no, just, that's fair. I do have to say, though, it's quite interesting to say that, you know, it kind of both happened this week that it was both team that are in L.A., right? What do you mean? Like the, uh, your guys' games there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I guess so. L.A. Rams Against and L.A. Chargers, the L.A. Right? teams, yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> the, soul, the, soul, <laughs> the contenders of the SoFi Stadium, which is – by far, probably one of the nicest stadiums in the NFL. Actually, it looks so beautiful. It would, it would definitely, yeah. It's. I think it was built to be that way for at least the next like seven years until oh. someone either. And the surrounding oh. too is oh. unreal. Like, it's do both so teams beautiful. share the stadium? They must not. Yep. Yeah, they do. Both teams share the stadium. They obviously just like home games and stuff like that. Nicole, for example, on a schedule and stuff. So the LA Rams would have to either be on a bye week or out of town when the Chargers are playing at SoFi Stadium. Now, if both teams were to play each other and stuff like that, the logo that would be posted on the field and posted around the stadium would be the home to that schedule. Just like Jets and Ash said too, actually. The Jets and and the Giants Giants. also share a stadium. Now, hold on, hold on. I wanna, I wanna, I just wanna, I wanna. Nicole, since your kind of mind is getting blown here right now, are you ready for this? I don't know if you've known this. You ready for this? 
What? There are teams, like there there are stadiums, arenas, I guess you would say, that have both hockey and basketball teams playing in the same stadium. Well, that's okay. That's 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 okay, I guess. Well, okay. mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know like if you knew that. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, just hosting two of like this, those same. I don't know. I guess it's kind of cool. Very lovely. They like to share. I'm happy to hear yeah. that. Oh, I mean, no, no, no. The 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 Lakers and Clippers one there, they do not like to share. That's that's oh. that's a for sure one. Though I think the Giants and Jets are totally okay. Who who gets uh I guess with the Jets and the Giants, who gets uh home advantage? Like is it is it more the Jets stadium or is it more the Giants stadium? It's I would probably say more it's more of a Giants stadium. I think everyone knows MetLife. Because of Manning, more. is that why? Yeah, well, just because of the Super Bowls and um, um, LT, like uh, the best defensive player of all time and stuff like that. That's what I would say. Okay. Uh, um, there's they've had like they've they're up there for like arguably one of the greatest defenses of all time. Like they've historically been around. Whereas the Jets have had their like Super Bowl one and Super Bowl three. God, I should know that. But I think it's Super Bowl one and Super Bowl three or Super Bowl two and three. And then it's been like, where the hell have you guys been since then? So. Yeah, yeah no, fair enough. Uh, just to kind of go on the, the topic of the Jets and the Giants, I'm definitely going to throw this out here, and people are going to think I'm crazy, but this is going to be my bold prediction. I think the Jets are going to go to the Super Bowl. I have a strong feeling about it. And I know that's crazy for me to say, but I don't, I don't know, man. My gut believes nope. it a lot right now. I'm not. First of all, I'm not even going to say that's crazy because the last time I said on a live show that someone was crazy, they said the Bengals were going to go to the Super Bowl last year. So any anything can anything can happen. I what? want a Super Bowl. Okay? Anything can happen. <laughs> but thanks for watching. If you like that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the Let's Talk Football community. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.